war was imminent. Anticipating Pakistan's incursion, India mobilized troops on the Western Front. At the time, the armored corps of both countries had a similar number of tanks. But Pakistan had just acquired a new generation tank, the American-built Patton. It was far superior to the British-built Centurion tank, the mainstay of the Indian ground attack. In the air, Pakistan relied on F-86 Sabres. Some of these were equipped with air-to-air -air missiles. Indian air power relied on superior pilot skills to match the Pakistani advantage in combat aircraft. Thwarted in Kashmir, Pakistan had launched a new offensive in Jammu. It was called Operation Grand Slam. The plan was to take the border town of Akhnur. But a sudden change in the command of Operation Grand Slam cost Pakistan the tactical advantage. Major General Yahya Khan was now in charge. But before Pakistan could mount an assault, India moved in to reinforce Akhnur. Here, the Indian Air Force played a crucial part as well. These combat aircraft at Delhi's Air Force Museum are a reminder of battles in the skies. In a counter-offensive, the Indians deployed the vampire aircraft to push back Pakistani ground forces. Soon, Pakistani forces lost ground, and Operation Grand Slam fell apart. Indian Prime Minister Shastri, in his radio broadcast to the country, prepared the citizens for a long battle ahead. In early September 1965, the Indian Air Force have established themselves in the war. India's small yet effective NAT fighter aircraft challenged the superiority of the Pakistani sabers. Two brothers, in particular, distinguished themselves. Squadron leader Trevor Keeler and squadron leader Denzel Keeler both brought down a saber jet each. Squadron leader Denzel Keeler describes these dogfights. On the third morning at 7 o'clock, we picked up Pakistan aircraft patrolling the Cham area. Eight NAT aircraft got airborne to intercept. They climbed straight to 20,000 feet. Front aircraft started turning. The sabers followed and my brother jumped behind these the sabers. There was about three, four minutes fight over there and finally he came into the site so my brother. He fired, aircraft was hit and it went down. So this was the first kill since independence. The first kill of shooting down of an aircraft since independence. And that is why I'm emphasizing it. That it was a shot in the arm, it was a moral booster and a big blow to Pakistan because they always thought that they were invincible. Because of the activity and intensity of fighting, I was told to take four aircraft. And then as we approached the target, I spotted two aircraft on top, covering the two aircraft who were attacking. I immediately went on to these two aircraft. He had lost sight of me because he kept doing this. This is the time when you're finished. If any aircraft lose sight, then you're finished. So he, he was just looking this way. He didn't know what to do. I jumped down and shot him down. Pakistan was very scared of us, they couldn't see us, and they always try to avoid a fight with us.